I'm Matt McCool with Motion VFX, and this is M Logo Cinematic 2. This is a brand new pack for DaVinci Resolve. It's full of professionally designed cinematic logos to elevate your production. Let's go ahead and take a look inside Resolve. All right, so once you have M Logo Cinematic 2 installed, it is super easy to use. All you have to do is come up here to your effects library. Under Titles and Motion VFX, you will see M Logo Cinematic 2 right here. And from here, you can see a total of 30 pre-animated logo designs. And if you have your hover scrub preview option enabled, this will let you scrub through each of these with your mouse and get an idea for how they will look. And these all have a range of styles that really fit with any kind of video that you're working on, whether this is for clients, corporate stuff, real estate, education, or even your own production company or YouTube channel. There are so many different use cases for these logos. So let's grab number three here and throw it on our timeline to take a look at how we can customize these logos. So this one just creates a nice little red flare that goes through our logo. We can come up here to the inspector and under logo controls, this is where we can browse for our own logo. So I'll just choose the motion VFX logo for this. We can also adjust the position, the rotation, as well as the size. Now, if you notice in the beginning here, our motion VFX circle is just a solid color. This is because this particular preset has this logo colorization. We could just turn this off if we wanted to see that logo. But let's say you had a logo that was just a simple alpha shape. Then having this logo colorization option is actually really nice because we can use that to kind of blend in the overall title effect together. You can see even though we have that colorization turned on, it eventually does fade into whatever color that file is. We also have control for the logo stroke. We can turn that off if we don't want this, or we can change the color. We also have some control over the glow. I turned my stroke off so this won't really do anything, but this main glow here, this is the overall glow happening around our main logo. So we could make this bigger, we could increase the strength of that glow. And then under the effects controls, this is where we can adjust our light leak settings. We could reposition, change the angle, as well as the blur, and of course the color. So let's say we wanted to go for like more of a blue theme. We could go back through and change each of these settings to more of a bluish color. And then lastly, under background controls, we have some settings for this kind of glow that happens in the bottom portion of the screen here. So we could also make this kind of a bluish color like this. Very cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple others here. Number four is really interesting. It creates this little transparent prism cube that sort of distorts the logo inside. So let's drop this next here in the timeline and see what kind of controls we have for the cube. So let's go ahead and change the logo out for something different and choose this icon here. And you can see this cube sort of distorts the logo very nicely. Now here you can see we got a couple controls specifically as the cube relates to the icon. So we could turn off the prism and the displace and this will just have kind of the icon superimposed on top of the cube. But those interactions really do look very nice. So we could kind of change the prism a little bit, maybe increase the blur, and the displace settings right here are interesting. So we could also kind of move around the displace settings, and you can see how that shifts that logo, and it's all interactive with that shape of that cube there. So I just think that is very, very nice. And then under effects controls, we could disable the box if we didn't want it for some reason, as well as the box prism. The cube prism is the outer cube. You can see here if we increase the gain and reduce the blur, you can see really what it's doing. It's just creating duplicates of that same cube in a very nice way. So kind of dialing this in could really give this a very interesting, unique look. Let's go ahead and move on and I actually have some footage over here and let's say I wanted to place a logo on top of this footage. Let's go with this very first one here because it has these really nice lens flares and uh, I think it fits nice with this shot. Maybe this is an advertisement for my production company or something like that. So under the logo controls, I'm going to browse for a different icon here. 
Now you can see this one just gives me the solid color background as all of these presets do by default. But under the background controls, we can disable this if we want to reveal the footage underneath. Or if we have it on, we can also dial in the settings here to kind of fade that color how we want to. Of course, we could make this a completely different color to fit the brand or the shot if we need to. In this example, I'm just going to leave the background off completely. And here is what that looks like. That's very, very nice. And as you can see, there is this little out animation. If we don't want that, we could always come up here to the very top. We have controls for the in and the out animation. I'm just going to turn the out off. So now once this logo settles into place, it will remain that way for the rest of the title. And something else I'd like to do for this, maybe I can trim this footage back a little bit and grab my opacity handle and sort of fade this out right about the same time that our logo settles in. And maybe we can even change some of the colors of these flares. So under background and controls, we've got four different controls, two for the light leaks and two more for these flares. And I think I might push this more towards bluish purple that matches our scene a little bit better. So you can see how you can really dial in these colors to fit your brand in a really nice customized way. So let's go ahead and move on to the next shot here. So with this one, I'm going to grab number 21 here. This one is one of the more fancy looking logo animations we have in this pack. So I'll just drop this right on top of our footage. And just like the other one here, I'm going to go into my background controls and just disable the main background. While I'm here, you can see we also have lines gradient. This will control the color of our lines here. So what if I did something kind of more of a warm and cool kind of color scheme like this. And of course, we need to change out our logo. Now, this particular logo also has this flare gradient right here. I'm just going to click on this little triangle here, which is currently completely transparent. But I think I want to add a little bit more of this warm color like this. And now you can see that creates this gradient that goes across our footage here. And I think that looks really pretty. Now, I'm just going to turn off the out animation on this one as well, because I want this to pretty much stay on that logo when it lands. Now something else you could do, you could also combine multiple logos together. Some of these, like number 27, is more of a simple logo design. I think it could work nicely as a subtitle to accompany our main logo. So let me just drop this and kind of stagger it a little bit once our main logo has settled in. Same thing with this, I'm going to disable the background. And instead of choosing logo, I'm going to switch this to text. And maybe this is a ad for a rental property. So we can type something like this. And let's just move that text down here a bit. And maybe I'll even move up my logo like this. And I'm just going to take everything and make sure that everything ends at the same time. Let's see what this looks like. So let's say you want to save out your modified logo design to reuse in future projects. So what you could do is over in your media pool, just make sure your power bins are visible like this. And I've just created a logos bin right here. And I can simply drag in this logo design right here in my power bin. And this will be visible in all my projects in this DaVinci Resolve database. The next time I drag it into my timeline, you can see all of those changes with my logo, with my color scheme. All of that is already set up for me, so I don't have to redo that every time. Now, the one thing about this is it will have to re-render this. So, you know, if you have a 4K timeline and it's kind of slow to play back, it will have to re-render this each time you use it. So what you could do if you know you're not going to change anything about your logo design, you could right click and render this in place. And you just want to make sure that you choose a codec that actually supports an alpha channel. In this case, I am using this 12-bit codec, which will preserve the alpha. And if I hit render, it will ask me where I want to save my logo. I'll just save it right here. And once that's done, I can just drag in this pre-render into my power bin. And this is actually a pre-rendered video with the alpha channel included. So when you scrub through it, you can get a preview for how it looks. Whereas the preset, when it's still in its editable form, you can't actually see what it does. Of course, you could rename this to something more specific, but the pre-render is nice because it'll render faster and you can preview how it looks right here in your power bin. 
Now let's say you want to save something like this out with like two logos, some footage, and you want to save this all together into your power bin. So if you try to select them all and create a compound clip, you can see that it won't let you put a compound clip in your power bin, but we could also just render this in place. And then we could put this pre-render into our power bin, just like the logo design. And we could reuse this in future projects very easily. And you can see we have perfectly fine playback. Nothing has to kind of re-render. So super convenient for when you want to reuse your logo designs. So I could spend a long time talking about these logo presets. They're all very professional and easy to use. It's a great way to impress your client or your audience. But that's it for this video. You can check out MLogo Cinematic 2 on our website. It is available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on future tutorials like this. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.